Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm excited, as I said, my sister Sharon Honors here with us. <laughs> Uh, she's actually a minister at First Baptist Church of Glenarden, a co-laborer in Christ with us there, and we praise God for her. She teaches Sunday school as well as in the Bible Institute there. Uh, she's uh, from the, a native of South Carolina, praise God, the oldest of eight, and she has one beautiful daughter. Uh, we want to bless God for her and her heart. Her service heart is to, to love others. Uh, she says she loves helping others, and so we thank God for her. So we want to allow you to come down there and share your testimony as the Lord has led you. Well, first of all, thank you so very much, Reverend Carr, for allowing me to come on the prayer line and share with you all today. And um, I'm going to share what God has put on my heart, and it's a testimony as well as a short uh, word of encouragement. Amen. And so I'm going to start out by giving my testimony in. So um, as we've all had to make adjustments during this time, uh, due to the pandemic in our family, workplace, church, and spiritual life, as well as our social life, I'd like to share one of my work stories, which God has brought me through, and how prayer has sustained me during this crisis. It was around March, say, at the beginning of this pandemic period, when I realized and received a call on a Friday morning informing me that I would be moving to another organization immediately, and I had no choice in the matter, I was immediately thrust in unfamiliar technology. I became frustrated, concerned, and a bit anxious. All the feelings that can accompany an unexpected sudden change in my life, as you would know, I had all those experiences. So every person, contact, all of the work knowledge seemed useless. It wasn't, but it seemed the way, that way. The game had changed and it required me to adjust my mindset, to participate. It required me to adjust my way of thinking, adjust to a new team members, new manager, new technology, and just a new way of doing business. And in the midst of all of this, we're still dealing with the pandemic, which required isolation, social distancing, online church, and a series of unknowns. With all of this change at once, I needed God's help. As things seemed as if they were falling apart all around me and out of control. So as I walked through the process, I'd like to share that I would pray all the time. These prayers, I'd like to call them whispers of prayers because most were short, short prayers, but ongoing as time would permit throughout the day. I'd like to share a little from 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, which says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So as Paul was addressing the Christians at Thessalonica, he provided them with instructions toward godly living, towards our leaders and brothers and sisters in the church. Those who were idle, you said idle, he warned them concerning their walk with the Lord, being busybodies and disorderly. Those that were discouraged, he offered them comfort. Those that were weak, he said that we're to offer them help and assistance and not to render evil for evil. And as we look at verses 16 through 18, so all of that happened before we get to verse 16 and 18, which says, rejoice. He's telling them, you're to do these things, but rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So God's will for every Christian, God's will for me in the midst of my situation, in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of unfamiliar territory, was to have joy. And where was that joy coming from? It was the joy of the Lord. The word says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And then he said to pray continuously. What is that? That is a lifestyle of prayer throughout the day, whenever possible. Remember, I told you I would do whispers of prayer. So I would do these short prayers before meetings, after meetings, in the shower, in the bed, in the car, while on Zoom, while walking, cooking, while gardening. If you're a caregiver, while you're being a caregiver, whenever possible, do the whispers of prayer. And then it's noted in Luke 18 and 1, it says, men are always to pray and not to faint. 
And we're supposed to also give thanks to God in everything, in all of our circumstances that we face. So as I maneuvered through this terrain of ups and downs on a daily basis for months, I had to pray continuously. And these were not long prayers, but throughout the day, short prayers of thanksgiving, affirmation, guidance, and courage. An example of that would be, I would bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I would encourage myself in the Lord. Let this mind be in me, which is also in Christ Jesus in Philippians 2 and 5. And recognize that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Even though I'm thrown in this familiar uh, technology and I don't understand it, guess what? Put in Philippians. Philippians 4, 13, and then to have the right mindset about my situation, creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in front of me is noted in Psalms 51 and 10. And the list goes on, asking him to anoint my mind and intellect to do the work before me, to open up my understanding so that I can apply this. And so in our weakness, he's made strong. And I know that this is a job situation that I was experiencing during the pandemic. But my brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you that you may be challenged. Maybe not your work challenge. Maybe it's a family challenge. Maybe it's sickness. Whatever it may be, I have just a few short takeaways. And some of my takeaways as I walk through this experience and some that I would like to share with you from the scripture is to pray continuously. And what does this do? It builds intimacy and relationship with God and keeps us connected to him. And then number two, know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. No matter what we're going through, no matter what our circumstances is, that joy of the Lord is our strength. And then number three, trust in him in all things. He'll bring us through it. He'll bring us through this pandemic. He's bringing me through these situations on my job. And then lastly, become comfortable with the uncomfortable. You know what? We're in different times. I was thrust in and we're all thrust in during these times. Become comfortable. Trust in God. He's going to bring us through it. And then lastly, the ask is, what is it you want me to do and learn as I walk through this journey with you, Lord? What is it that you want me to do and learn as I walk through this journey with you, Lord? During this pandemic, doing challenges on our job, doing challenges on our family, doing our, in our families. And lastly, I want to repeat as the scripture says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Without a doubt, we got to pray always every single day, almost every second of the day, <laughs> because we want to keep a connection with God and keep our heart open for him to speak to us in every situation. So praise God for that testimony. Thank you. And we want to do now is turn our heart to God and to pray. So we're going to open a prayer lines and we're going to allow everybody to pray right now. Let's pray. Father, in the holy and master's name of Jesus, we come thanking you, Lord. We thank you, God, that you're our God, that you're sovereign, that you're our keeper, that you're our way maker. Even when we're in unfamiliar territory, even when we find ourselves facing situations we just don't know what to do with, God, you are still sovereign. You still have us in the palm of your hand. Indeed, your word tells us you have engraved us in the palm of your hand. So we trust and believe that nothing can come in our lives that didn't filter through your beautiful and wonderful and loving hands, oh God. So we come in confidence today. We come yes. boldly because your word told us we could come boldly to the throne of grace, God, and we would get the help and, and the grace that we need right now. God, we come asking in the name of Jesus, forgive us our transgressions and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. We come lifting up our hearts before you, asking you to purge us and cleanse us and heal us, asking you to do what only you can, God, turn our situations around where we have difficulties and mountains that we cannot seem to move. God, we know that your word has told us by faith we can speak to every mountain. And sometimes, God, we just simply don't know how to get through it. We ask you because we know that you can bring us through no matter how situations might seem, God. We, we know by faith that as we stand on your word, 
Little by little, we see those mountains move. Little by little, sometimes. Sometimes we see them as to leave you this far, but sometimes it's little by little, we see those mountains moving. So help us to stand firm and to see the salvation, Lord God, that you make in the name of Jesus. We cry out for those who are struggling today, those who have uh, not just stories from the pandemic, but life struggles right now, God. They can't make ends meet. They don't have enough money, it feels like, or don't have enough energy even to deal with the travails of life. Don't have enough, Lord God, fortitude to face the the frustrations and the difficulties. Oh God, I'm asking mm-hmm. you to show yourself mighty in their behalf. Move in their situations, God. Show up and mm-hmm. provide, Lord. Make means, Lord. Financial means, whatever means they need. God, give peace mm-hmm. where there's a lack of consolation. Bring your presence, oh God, that they would know your peace. That those who are struggling emotionally, God, you would be their stabilizer. You would be the way maker to help them know that they can mm-hmm. rest in you, trust you to get them through this situation. God, there are those who are struggling in terms of their physical well-being. Mm-hmm. Holy one of Israel, I'm asking you to touch and heal and deliver. Turn the situation around, almighty God. Help them, heal them in the mighty name of Jesus. Stretch forth your hand to touch to heal, oh God, heal Shirley's son, God, in the name of Jesus. You know Jamil's situation. Yes. You know what he's struggling with. Touch his lungs, oh God. Touch Ma Mary Brown, Lord. Touch and heal her breast, Father. Drive out every vestige of cancer in the name of Jesus. Even her daughter, bless and heal in yes. the name of Jesus. God, we stretch for our we ask you to stretch forth your hand and touch every person across the land that's sick, that's going through. We cry for Kivet, Lord God, whose children, uh, whose son, Lord, now you know has gone. Lord, touch her and comfort her as only you can in the name of Jesus. Yes. Wrap your loving arms around the Wilson family, oh God. We know that you're well able. There's nothing to mm-hmm. offer you. Touch Jessica, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Sister uh, Jessica, God, as she mourns the loss and passing of her friend, comfort her heart, mm-hmm. oh God, in the name of Jesus. We know you are the great yes. I am, and you're the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles, oh God. We cry out for our leaders today, the pastors who are serving your body. God, we cry out for yes. Pastor John K. Jenkins Sr. and every other pastor who stands in the gap to serve today, cover and keep them, bless them, guide them, give them your wisdom, oh God. We cry out for the leaders across the land, the president and the vice president and the Congress, oh God, members, senators and House of Representatives, Lord God. We ask you to cover them in the and keep them and guide them, use them for your glory. Turn their hearts according to your divine will. Let your yes. will be done, Almighty King. We pray in the name of Jesus, God, for those who are going out, who are Jesus. frontline workers, cashiers, and people who are working in hospitals, medical professionals, doctors, and nurses, and orderlies, and assistants, and RNs, and LPNs, and Oh, God, radiologists, you know every single person who's going out there putting their life on the line. Those who are out there taking the daily swabs, God, in tents and in drive throughs and in CVSs and other places, Lord, cover them and keep them and protect mm. them, God. In the name of Jesus, we lift up everybody working in, in that Jesus. professional uh, medical profession, God. Be with them and cover their families that they would not take any sickness home. In the name of Jesus, we cry for other workers, cash years and bus drivers and truck drivers, delivery people, God, people who are out there daily. We cry for those who are researching, the Mm. epidemiologists and all those involved in research. We cry that you would give them wisdom and guidance and show them your divine Mm. will, God, according to your uh, magnificent wisdom. Give them direction, oh God, to know exactly what to do and how to do it. God, we cry for this nation that you would stand, oh God, and reach yes. down and touch our families and our, our minds, oh God, that we would be able to walk in love with one another, touch our hearts, God, and we mm-hmm. would not be led by hatred, God, the, the division of racial, uh, the racial climate and the division amongst us, God, drive it out in the name of Jesus, even within your church, Father, bring love, bring wholeness, bring oneness in the name of Jesus, surely, yes, God. Lord. You're able. Surely yes, there's nothing to 
Father, we pray in the name of Jesus and we say thank you. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Name God. Jesus. Your name thank be you. praised. In Good Jesus' name. name we pray, Lord. Amen. In and Jesus' amen. name. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you pray now, Mrs. Sharon? Yes. Our Father and our God, we do come before you, Lord, thanking you and blessing your holy name, giving you all of the glory and honor and praise. It all belongs to you, God. We thank you, Father, for being a sovereign God, a God who does not fail, a God who's with us, Lord, who never leaves us, who never forsakes us, who is the same. There is no shadow of turning. We thank you, God, that you love us with an everlasting love. We thank you that you care for us, that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We thank you, God, that you are Jehovah Shalom, our peace. We thank you that you are the mighty one. You are, Lord God, King of kings, and you are Lord of lords. There was none before you, and there shall be none after you. Yes. We thank you, Lord, that you are the same. We thank you, Lord, and we ask, Lord, that you would forgive us of all of our sins, the things we said, done, or thought, contrary to your word, Lord. And so, Lord God, we ask, as we come before you, Lord, everyone that's on this prayer line, Lord, them and anybody that's connected to them, Lord, yes. we just come before you thanking you, Lord, for whatever they may stand in need of, that you would meet their very needs that you would surprise them, Lord, that you would show yourself mighty and you would show yourself strong. Lord, we pray, God, that during this time that we get to know you in a more intimate way, Lord, yeah. that we would be connected to you and that, Lord, you would anoint our minds and our intellect, God, that we would have fellowship with you and the visions and the purpose and the dreams that you put on the inside of us, that we, God, would be obedient to you to allow those things to be manifested in us so that we can proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Lord, yeah. that we would not be afraid, that we would not be fear, that the kingdom of God, we would preach the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand, Lord God, and that we, God, would humble ourselves under your word. And Lord, the things that you called us to do, that we would do them, Lord that we would walk in the kingdom, walk in your purpose, walk yeah. according to your will for our lives. We pray, God, for a shield of protection around us, Lord, a shield of protection. And we pray for this ministry and Reverend Letty, Lord, that you, God, will continue to expand her territory to reach, Lord, the uttermost parts of the earth, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you for the audience that she has. And we pray, God, that many will come to know you in the pardoning of their sins, that yeah. many will become encouraged, that many, Lord God, will get to know who Jesus is because of this prayer line, Lord. Yes. Oh, Father, we pray whatever her needs are, that you would meet her need, Lord. Yes. And Lord, we just thank you. We praise you, Lord. We thank you for her stepping out by faith, Lord. Yes. You, she had the faith of a mustard seed. And for that, we are grateful. And we pray, God, that during this time, that more would step out, that they would step out and do the things that you called them to do, Lord God, yeah. that you would continue to give us strategy, that you would continue to give us a plan, that we would walk by faith and not by sight. Yes. We thank you, Lord. We pray, God, as she's already prayed for healing, Lord, for those that need to be healed, for deliverance for those that need to be delivered. We pray, God, for salvation for those that need to be saved. We yes. pray, God, for those that need a closer walk with you, God, that they would return to you, Father, that they would not walk idle, Lord, but yes. that they would get close to you, Lord, and get in fellowship with you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And we would not, as we're in the midst of all these challenging times, that we would not, the way we came in, that we would not go out. And yeah. Lord, for so many people that are hurting, we pray, God, that you, the God of all comfort, would meet them at their place of need. Those that don't have anybody to pray for them, Lord, we pray on their behalf. You know their names. We don't, but you do. And yeah. so, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We praise you. And we bless you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen, and amen. And we always like to make sure that before we go, we give an opportunity for everyone to give their heart to Christ. 
we want to invite you, if you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, that today is the day that you would do it. Today, surely, is the day of salvation. We want to encourage you. Don't let this harvest pass you by. God is a faithful God. He's a merciful God. He's a kind God. And he gives us opportunity. It's up to us to take advantage of that opportunity. So today, if you hear his voice, you hear him knocking at the door of your heart, you can say yes to the Lord. You want to know that you have eternal life so that when you leave this earth, you know you'll spend your eternity with him. And you want to have eternal life because you begin today walking with him. You begin today to hear his voice. You begin today to receive the encouragement that you need. I was blessed when I was talking to a dear sister and she was saying how she was hurting because she was going through something, but she said it was amazing. I don't, she said, I don't understand the whole Bible, but it's something that when I read it, it just soothes my soul. When you have the Holy Spirit abiding on the inside of you, when God gets a hold of your heart, he will help you through mm -hmm. every situation. Amen. I want to encourage you, if you haven't established a relationship with God through his son today, don't let this opportunity pass you by. I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. All you have to do is pray and repeat after me, and then you will be saved. And then God will begin to work in your life. Yes, it's a gradual process. You won't be like, poof, perfect, but you will find that you're better and better every day as you walk with him. So let's begin. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. I believe you died for every one of my sins. I believe you were buried and God has raised you from the dead. Come into my heart, Jesus. Take control of my life. I repent of my sins. And I turn to you. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We believe if you prayed that amen. prayer today, you are a child of God and your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you are the, the reason there's a party in heaven. Whenever someone says yes to the Lord, and I repent, <laughs> the angels throw a party on your Amen. behalf. Today is your spiritual Amen. birthday, so it's only appropriate you have a birthday party. <laughs> Amen. Right this Amen. day, after, this is my day. This is the day I gave my life to Christ. And go tell somebody that you've made this commitment who loves God that they can walk with you. And we invite you to let us know because we want to encourage you as well. You can email me at Rev Letty Carr, R E V L E T T I E C A R R, at whosoeverbelieves.org. I would love to share and encourage you and bless you as best I can. And check out whosoeverbelieves.org. It's a community of people that are just fellowshipping and growing together and, and learning and iron sharpening iron and laughing and all the things that you can do on Facebook, you can do there. All the things you can do in group me, you can do there. But all the more you get the encouragement of the saints. So we encourage you to check us out, whosoeverbelieves.org. And uh, we want to say thank you again to my sister Sharon. Bless you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Amen. So Lord willing, we will- And thank you for the invite. Amen. My pleasure. And so, Lord willing, we will see you again tomorrow at 3.16 p.m. Thank you, guys. Have a blessed day.